Hello and welcome to the Car Kerala channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about some of the other driving assist functions like RCTA, RCD, ICS, panoramic camera, all these acronyms. We're going to talk about how they basically function, the basic operation as a consumer, and then how they actually work behind the scenes following the theme of this channel, simple because it's really complicated. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other videos. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. And without further ado, let's dig right into it. Let's start with ICS. It actually stands for intelligence clearance sonar and now i am more confused because that's a pretty big word basically it's parking assist it's been around for ever the little round sensors on the bumpers you get close to an object starts beeping beeping faster then continuous beep then crash as simple as that they haven't really changed much these ultrasonic sensors they send ultrasonic waves they come back bounce off the object, come back, they're very short range. They're not very long range, if you would, like the radar sensor or the other heavy duty sensors. They work great, they're pretty simple. They don't have much going on. They just detect, they're usually connected in series. So if one of them goes bad, all of them go stop working. And they really could take a beating in accidents and stuff. They're really tough and hard to break if they crack and water gets in them that's kind of where their problems start but there's not really much to them they're they're rather simple however that concept of the parking sensors that i talked about being super basic has been taken to a new level as these cars got newer the engineers figured well we have these sensors on there why don't we make more use of them and that's the beauty of toyota they are continuously improving their existing stuff. They don't just run to get the latest and the greatest. No, they take their current designs to the limit, then move on from them. And they have not taken this to the limit. As you will see, they've done a lot more into this system. So they took the parking sensors and they figured, well, they work great, but we need it to be more. So when you get too close to an object and, and the way these sensors work in the newer cars, it needs to detect an object in two sensors. That's just a verification that there is an actual object behind you when you're reversing. So all these sensors always work in pairs, either the corner one and the, and the middle one or the two middle ones or the middle one and the corner one. They, they both have to detect the object for it to actually act on it. What the car is going to do is, you get too close to the object, it's going to make a judgment. All the computers are talking and they're, they have a war room set up. They're all sitting down, deciding all these things while you're just backing out of your driveway into the car behind you that you didn't see. Well, they're going to make a decision. First, if you get too close, they're going to reduce the power of the engine. They're going to basically cut the throttle out see if you if you notice that hey why is the car not moving anymore if that doesn't do it and you get really close when they're not happy they're just gonna apply the brakes remember all these computers are talking this is a very simple integration of the system all the computers are talking in the system all they have to do is for the parking assist or ics computer to pick up the phone call the abs or brake system hey man slam the brakes please Brakes, the car stopped, accident avoided. It's as simple as that. People dislike computers in newer cars. They say they complicate things and they make everything super complicated. And a lot of older mechanics unfortunately left the business. Great mechanics that are irreplaceable left this business because of these computers. I am here to say that I am one of those guys that love the computers because computers talk, carburetors don't talk. That's just me. Most old mechanics will call me. Yeah, a young guy who hasn't worked on carburetor. I have worked on carburetors, but I like computers better because they talk and I can talk to them too. So this is the basic integration of this system. This is how it activates the brakes. It's basically software. Computers are always talking, just a software for them to actually talk to each other and work together. That's the basic integration of the system. 
RCTA, that's one that usually confuses people because it's a giant acronym. They don't even know what it means. They just see it. What does that mean on the dash? Well, it means rear cross traffic alert. So basically, if a car is passing behind you as you're reversing out of your driveway, out of a parking spot, it's going to pick that car, it's going to alert you. In the newer cars, it takes it even further. If you don't stop, it's going to cut the throttle so the car would kind of slow down. If you still don't stop, it's going to slam on the brakes. Very beautiful system. It works. We've all been in those situations where you're back in our parking lot in Walmart and somebody comes flying down the thing. You don't see them. You almost hit them and all this mess. Well, the system is there to alert you. And if you still didn't react in time, it's actually going to stop the car and they work really good. How the system actually works. We talked in, in a previous video about blind spot monitor and I told you in that video how they, after they designed the blind spot and they put two radar sensors behind the bumper. I'll leave that video right here for you to see it. After they designed that, it was like, hmm, how can we make more use of these sensors that now we have on the cars? Again, no real more added parts to this. They simply changed the software, programmed it more. Now it's going to use those blind spot monitor sensors that are already in the car to, when you put it in reverse, they wake up, they get a signal to wake up, and now they're scanning the sides or the back sides of the car. When, it's, when they see a car approaching, because remember, there's one on the left, one on the right. As they see a car approaching, they're going to alert you. If you're backing up, they're going to keep, keep an eye on it, keep an eye on it. If you get too close, cut the throttle, too close, okay, hey, brake, cut the brakes, put the brakes on. It applies the brakes. So you see how this system is not exactly super complicated. It is all computer software. It, it, they just, all these various sensors, they just work together and they have constant communication. They're always assembled, ready to save you from the next accident. That's the beauty of the system. It's really not super complicated, which takes us to the next non-complicated system. RCD, and this is the newest one. And most people wonder about this one because this one only pops up when you put it in reverse. It's rear camera detection. This system uses the already existing backup camera. It's basically gonna break the signal of the camera into two. One of them is gonna go to your radio screen so you can see what's behind you. And the other one is gonna go to a little computer. All that computer does is looks at the picture and analyzes it. Do I see a kid running behind your car? Is that an old man walking behind your car? It's looking for pedestrians. When it sees a pedestrian, it's gonna start flashing a little pedestrian sign on the screen. If you get too close and it doesn't like it, it's gonna do the same. It's the same thing, it's gonna cut the throttle back, in case you, hopefully you notice. If you don't notice, it's gonna slam on the brakes. This system has no moving parts. They just added a little computer or a little function to scan through that footage of the rear view camera that's already in the car. It's a very simple system and it works great. One thing about this system though that brings so many people into the dealership left and right, for some reason, sometimes it loses the calibration of the steering. And it needs that calibration of the steering so it would know which direction you're heading. Because if the pedestrian is here and you're heading that way, you're, not, you're heading away from the pedestrian. So it needs to know that. That's one of the inputs to the system that it relies on. So sometimes you put your car in reverse, you turn the steering wheel, and you notice it says RCD unavailable at the bottom of the, of the, rear view, of the screen on the radio. And then it, these little fancy lines that move as you turn the wheel, they're not there anymore. Hmm, what happened here? That brings more people to the dealership and it's such a simple repair. So here it goes. Get in the car, start it, put it in reverse. That RCD unavailable will come up. Turn your wheel all the way to the right till it stops. Then turn your wheel all the way to the left till it stops. And voila, she's back. That's all it needed. It just needed to know how far is you. Where, is, where am I in the steering range? Once it picks that up, everything starts working and life is good. Let's talk about the last one and the newest guy, panoramic view 
or panoramic camera view or whatever you want to call it. This system is simple, but it can turn into a big nightmare very, very quickly. This simple, this system is a beautiful thing, visually beautiful. You put the car in reverse and it shows you like there is a little camera hovering over the car. It shows you all around the car. It's a 3D picture. It's a beautiful thing. Most people wonder, well, how does it work? Like, how is it doing that? And that's the beauty of photography, actually. It doesn't even have anything to do with the car. So that system has four cameras. It uses four cameras, believe it or not. Cars with that system has four cameras in addition to the other camera on the windshield. So there's a camera in the back. Most cars have that, the rear view camera. When you put it in reverse, pops up. That's very simple. There is camera number one. Camera number two is in the front of the car. Somewhere in the front, you'll see another camera popped up. And then there's two more cameras underneath the side view mirrors. So that's four cameras, but it's like, wait a minute, man. Well, I see four cameras, but how, do, how does it make that perfect circle around it? Well, these cameras are wide angle cameras. They can almost see 180 degrees. So they take each picture from this camera and they stitch them together. So you have the view from the front and it's perfectly calibrated to, draw, to cut a line in the picture and stitch the next picture to it. Remember, it's 180 degrees this way, that's the mirror one, and then the other one, then the other one. So if you, if you take the pictures of these cameras and lay it down on a paper, there's a 90 degree overlap between those pictures. And that's how, this, how the system does. It puts those pictures, overlay them over the car, and then it cuts one of the 90 degrees off. And now you have a perfect surround view of the car. Beautiful system, it's very simple, but there is a big problem with this system that you really need to be aware of. When this system goes out of calibration, it becomes dangerous. Because remember, these pictures are perfectly aligned, so the cut is perfect between the images. When you move these cameras, let's say car got an accident, or mirror got bent, or the trunk got damaged or whatever the case may be. Well, these pictures are no longer, it's assuming that the cameras are perfectly aligned from how they came out of the factory. When these cameras move a little bit, whatever movement, they come out of alignment and they could be very dangerous if you're really relying on this system. So you could have a person standing there and because the, the you remember how we said the 180 degrees that they perfectly line up? If that lining up is not right, that person could not show in that view. And you could run over them if you're really just looking at that camera, which I don't advise, of course, common sense. But it's a nice feature to use. If the calibration is off, it's a very cumbersome process to do it because now the process involves drawing a perfectly measured square around the car and then turn on the cameras and you want these, these lines to perfectly match. You can actually manually adjust the camera cut and it'll start moving these lines until they're perfectly aligned. And it's a very time consuming process and it takes a lot of accuracy and it takes someone with enormous patience to get it perfect. I have done a few that are very frustrating to get right. So the moral of this idea is if you get in an accident that damages a mirror, that damages the front or the back of the car, make sure that your insurance calibrates the system and pays for it. This calibration is not cheap, it is extremely time consuming, and it really takes a person with that kind of patience to get it perfect. So when you get it, make sure you test it, walk around the car, have someone sit in the car watching the, the camera, and then walk around to see that it doesn't, you always appear in the shot. That's, how, that's a good way to verify that they're perfectly calibrated. So there you have it, guys. I hope this gives you a better understanding of how these systems work, of how everything is interconnected. Toyota is always about continuously improving their products and they always take the smallest thing and they take 
every single possible avenue with it. The blind spot monitor, when it came out, it was a very basic system. It worked great, had its issues, but nothing great. But now they took it to the next level. I can't wait for the future where they take things even that much more. I hope you learned something new in this video. I hope this video was informative. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel if you're not a subscriber. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and you have a wonderful day.